So um, Earth's primary atmosphere, the very first atmosphere that the planet had when it was early in its uh, existence, these were mostly made of gases that were already around in the stellar nebula. So mostly hydrogen and also some helium. So this primary atmosphere, majority hydrogen. And my question for you is, um, do hydrogen and helium, the components of this atmosphere, have large or small masses compared to other elements? This isn't something I necessarily expect you to know, but maybe you do. Okay, I see most votes for hydrogen and helium are small. They're, they have small masses compared to other elements. That's exactly right. So hydrogen has an atomic mass of two if it's in the form of hydrogen gas. Helium has a mass of four. And so those are very small compared to all the other elements. Everything else is heavier than that. So this led to changes in Earth's early atmosphere. Because um, hydrogen and helium are very small, um, they are easy to lose. So a given molecule will move around kind of in a random motion. And the speed at which it moves is proportional to the temperature that it's at. So if you have a higher temperature, atoms will, molecules will move faster. Um, and the higher, te higher temperatures lead to faster motion. And that motion is especially faster for lighter objects. So because of these uh, low masses, it's easy for these gases to escape the Earth's gravitational pull. This idea is related to the idea of escape velocity, uh, which we'll talk about next week. But for now, suffice it to say that we can lose the lightest elements in our atmosphere to space. And this is exactly what happened to Earth's primary atmosphere. But luckily, we were able to gain a secondary atmosphere because of volcanoes. So there's you know, gas that's trapped within the rock underneath Earth's surface and volcanoes can spew some of that gas into our atmosphere. So this built up over time. Um, it was now primarily water, 58% water, 23% carbon dioxide, 13% sulfur dioxide, and then the rest is nitrogen and noble gases, which are argon, krypton, neon, things that don't react with other um, chemicals. So our secondary atmosphere builds up over time but that's not the end of the story. Instead, it morphs into our current atmosphere. And our current atmosphere has much more nitrogen, 78% nitrogen. It has oxygen, which was not even in Earth's secondary atmosphere. Uh, so 21% oxygen, 1% of those noble gases. And now CO2 and water, which used to be the largest components of the atmosphere, those are now basically trace amounts. So how did this happen? We want to understand how did we go from these numbers in our secondary atmosphere to these um, components of our current atmosphere? What changes happened over time? So question for you, what do you think happened to the water in Earth's primary or secondary atmosphere? And I'm seeing a little over half the votes for option number one and every other answer with a few votes. So number one is definitely uh, what happened. So the water from Earth's secondary atmosphere that was put there by volcanoes, this condensed to a liquid. It created our oceans. Um, we know, I mean, some of it could have frozen at ice and at the poles, but the vast, vast majority of our water is in our oceans. So um, let's see. About 1.7% of all water on Earth currently is frozen at ice in the poles, just so that's your index here. Um, three is not a very good answer because it already was in the air, but some of the water vapor definitely did remain in the air, just a very, very small amount. Um, it did not float off into space, which is good because I'm glad we have oceans so that we can, you know, number one, enjoy them on the beach, but also number two, because it's such a really important part of our planetary ecosystem and also our economy. Okay, so the water in Earth's atmosphere 
condensed into liquid. And so very little of it was left in our current atmosphere. Um, so what happened to the CO2? I'm gonna use a series of uh, cartoons here to explain what happened to the other gases. So CO2 in the atmosphere, it has a number of different things that it can do. Um, first of all, it can dissolve into water. So uh, CO2, when dissolved into water, creates carbonic acid. Um, when more and more CO2 dissolves into seawater, the higher level of acid can cause problems for shellfish. But anyway, so some CO2 can dissolve into water. Uh, other CO2 can um, dissolve directly into the um, rock, but more common, the carbonic acid with water reacts chemically with rock and that traps the carbon dioxide within the rock. So that trapped carbon is then part of the Earth's crust instead of part of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, so you can think of this pathway as going through water into stone. It can also go directly into stone, but it's not as, as efficient as when that process is mediated by water. Another thing, of course, that CO2 can do is feed plants, which then create oxygen, and also feed animals, which then die and also become locked within the Earth's crust. So many different ways for CO2 to become part of the crust. So essentially, you can think of this absorbed CO2 as becoming trapped. OK, so that's what happened to our CO2. The 23% of our secondary atmosphere that was CO2 dropped down to just 0.04% because much of it was absorbed into the land by those different routes. So next, let's consider the sulfur dioxide. And the sulfur dioxide, it can actually do a very similar thing. So the sulfur dioxide can also dissolve into water, creating sulfuric acid, and also then react chemically with the rocks in the earth and become deposited in stone. So similar path to the CO2, the sulfur dioxide, of course, does not feed plants. So that pathway is missing for SO2. So the sulfur dioxide, the third largest component of our secondary atmosphere, is now also very, very trace in our current atmosphere because it so efficiently became um, trapped within the crust. All right, and then finally, um, the nitrogen was only 5% of our initial atmosphere. The total amount of it hasn't changed. Nitrogen doesn't react with um, other things very well. Um, and so it survived and now is the largest component of our atmosphere simply because it didn't have these other pathways that it could follow. So nothing could happen to it. It persists unchanged. All right, and we also have about the same amount of noble gases as we had before. So this is the evolution process of Earth's atmosphere from secondary atmosphere created by volcanoes to the atmosphere that we have today. Okay, so you might ask, well, where'd all that oxygen come from? Because it's a really huge component of our current atmosphere. And the answer is simply photosynthesis uh, releases oxygen into the atmosphere, um, but not most of it came from plants on the surface. Most of it uh, actually came from plankton and algae in the ocean. So early in the history of life on Earth, um, ocean-based photosynthetic organisms created a whole bunch of oxygen, um, which allowed animals to evolve and use it. So thanks, algae. All right, so now we have a full picture of how everything came to be in our current atmosphere. <laughs>